Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to chaos. I am two minutes late today because my dogs won't stop barking and I got them to stop barking and now they're barking again. Ah! Anyhow, hello, everybody. Hopefully they'll calm down. Come here, Pepper. Come here. Come over here. Come here. Your little bark is cute, but nobody wants to hear you. Go lay down. Go lay down. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys, listen, it's quiet here. If that's the sound of my kids being back to school, but the dogs are going crazy. So it's chaos anyway. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great day, a great week. Um, I have some really fun projects for you today. Hi guys. Glad you're joining me. Okay. Let's see my, I want to be able to see your comments, but something's weird going on. Why do I always have these technology problems? So today, no, I don't want to go live on my Kindle. No, thank you. Let's see if we can change that. Today, I have three projects for the Have a Hoot stamp set. I've actually gotten several requests to use this and I had it on the list. I was just trying to wait a little bit further into the fall and I thought um, early to mid-October was the perfect time. This is a great stamp set and I had a lot of fun playing with it. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, I've got this up. Let's see if I can find me. There I am and let me see if I can see your comments. Um, good, okay, we got it. So, all right. I'm glad it's Friday. It's been a rough week here. I have had a horrible neck issue and it's like making me exhausted, which is weird, but I'm tired of it and I really just want to go lay down. <laughs> and you know what? Laying down doing nothing on Saturday is acceptable, right? All right. Well, that's what I'm going to do. So welcome to Facebook Friday. <laughs> if you haven't joined me before, I do three projects with one product usually this week. Again, it's the Have a Hoot bundle. And um, I'm doing a Halloween, a Christmas, and an everyday project. Uh, if you go over to pinkbuckaroo.com right now, under the last, the third photo, you'll find this PDF. It's going to have all the measurements and the products that I'm using. Um, I especially want to point out on here that they're right here, if you can see it, the designer series paper that I'm using, both of them are on sale right now. Um, so I have marked them in red. If you uh, love paper like I do, um, that now's the time to stock up on your paper. Um, a lot of it is, it's not all of our paper, but it's a lot of our paper. So make sure you hop over there to stamp it up to check it out. Okay, so let's see, what do I wanna tell you guys first? Um, the flower for every season bundle, I was a little bit behind in mailing these out. I emailed them out just a little while ago. If you spend over $50 with me online, you get this for free. It's a tutorial, um, it's 12 different tutorials, all by different Stampin' Up! demonstrators from around the world. I don't know why I'm looking at it and not showing you guys, <laughs> like I haven't seen it. Um, but um, they are all video tutorials and they all have these links where you can go and watch the video. And all of them use the For Every Season suite. My project is always a 3D project and so here's mine, a single coffee cup carrier this month. If you are not planning on shopping with me, that's totally okay. I have it in my PDF store also. Um, all of my PDFs typically are $15 and they are immediately emailed to you once you purchase them. So that's one of them over there. I will update the link here on YouTube um, directly to my PDF store when I'm done, but you can also go to pinkbuckaroo.com and click the tab at the top that says PDF store. All right, the second thing is my class to go this month features the Love of Leaves stamp set. It's got four fancy cards and two 3D projects. You can get it with or without the stamps and dies. You'll need the stamps and dies to make your projects, but if you already have them, there's a class kit that you can get that doesn't include the bundle. My classes are to go, which means I mail them to you. They are delivered to your mailbox with a PDF that is emailed to you, and then you do them whenever you want. There's not a class, um, an online class time that you have to show up for. You can save it for the weekend. You could save it for November. You could save it for 2021. You'll have it forever for whenever you want to do it at your convenience. But there is a deadline for the kit. That is October 21st. And um, the PDF is always available and it is in my PDF store forever. But the class kit, if you want the class kit, um, 
October 21st is the deadline for that. I will again update the link here on Facebook um, to direct you directly to that post. I can't post the registration link on um, social media or on my blog per Stampin' Up! Rules, but I can email it to you. So if you want to register for that class to go, um, you can um, email me or message me, okay? Okay, let's see. Um, D, I see your question. Club Create is $39. So no, unless you do add-ons, then yes. All right, so it's free with a $50 purchase. And Club Create also includes shipping in there. So um, if you do an add-on, message me and we will chat about that, okay? All right, let's see. Um, is that all I had? Oh, no, no. Back by popular demand, the adhesive kits. I have them. I have not listed them yet. I will do that soon. Um, probably not until next week. If you've already emailed me and said you want one of these, don't worry. You are on the list and you will have first dibs at these. Um, they um, have a lot of adhesive in it. I can't even remember now. It's got the stamp and seal, uh, dimensionals, foam sheets, glue dots, um, Tombow adhesive sheets. Is that it? Anyways, I will post that coming up soon. Maybe we'll do it Monday. I'll try to have them done by Monday, okay? So if you have been wanting an adhesive kit, the kit they are back, but they're just not posted yet. I'm gonna work through my um, request list, those that missed out last time and had emailed me, I'll work through that, and then I will offer them up to the rest of you, okay? Okay, how about prizes? I always give away prizes. Oh my goodness, I didn't pick prizes for this week. I didn't choose. I didn't pull out any prizes. I do, I, I need to do that. I wonder if I can find something in here real fast. Let's see. You know what? I'll just promise you guys really good prizes next week because my prize cabinet, it's a giant mess and I would have to dig through and find things that match. <laughs> so I will have frames and stamps to give away next week. All you have to do is share the video, okay? This week, the winners are Amy Luna and Cindy Cop, Cindy and Amy, message me your email or your mailing addresses so that I can mail you your prizes. Thank you so much for sharing my, my video on Facebook. I appreciate it. I feel very off today. I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of chaos outside my window. I'm not sure. I'm distracted by that. I'm distracted by the dog. Oh, that's all right. We'll get through it. We're ready to stamp. If you have not joined me for Facebook Friday before, I do three projects. Again, the PDF is over at my blog. I also offer the projects free with an equal purchase, not an equal, with a minimum purchase at stampinup.com when you use the host code that's associated with Facebook Friday. Um, the make and takes come. They look like this. This is last week's. I do most of the work for you. You have to provide the stamps and uh, die, whatever I'm featuring. So this week, to do these projects, you would need the dies and the stamps from the Have a Hoop bundle and ink and adhesive. I don't pre-stamp any images. You'll need the stamps, ink and adhesive, okay? But everything else is there for you. Die cuts, embellishments, ribbon. I usually try to tie the ribbon. Look at that, three in a row that use my favorite ribbon. That one did right there. Isn't that funny? I love that ribbon the bumblebee thing I'm living. Um, so if you'd like those make and takes, the deadline is Monday at midnight. In your order, it needs to be $35 or more. Um, using the host code, you'll see when I flip the camera around, it's also on the PDF. And over at pinkbuckaroo.com, if you're ready to order, you can make sure. Um, you guys, you know, something about the host code. We had um, a web page redo recently. They completely redid our web page. And before they did that, when you went to submit your order, there would be a pop-up at the end that says, do you have a host code? And it was great. But I have found since our new web page has come up, um, it doesn't prompt you anymore. And I have actually forgotten the host code myself several times. Um, I put orders in as a customer myself and use host codes as well. I put um, customer orders in for customers and use the host code and I, have forgotten. If I forget the host code, you guys are probably going to forget the host code too. So when you go to check out, um, under your total, there's two little like plus signs. One says coupon code and one says host code. You have to click on that to enter the host code on your cart page. If you forget, 
it's not a tragedy, you can email me and I can call them or you can call them. Either way, I can apply that host code um, for you. Um, if you forget, I have emailed them, I've messaged them. I don't know any other demonstrators out there have noticed this. Um, they need to get that pop up again because as you're totaling out, you're not thinking about your host code, you're thinking about your credit card information and all that. So it used to be easier and they've made it a little trickier on us, but don't forget, try not to forget that host code because it's important. I use the Stampin' Rewards that I collect from the host code for your prizes. Um, every few weeks I close it and I order all prizes and that's the prizes I give away for you guys. Um, so make sure to use that host code so we can get bigger and better prizes, okay? Okay, I think we're ready. I'm gonna turn you guys around. You know, I've always said I don't have the software but guess what I bought the fancy software to do the little transition so I don't have to do this whole awkward like close your eyes I'm gonna switch you around I bought the fancy software and it's so hard and I am a tech person I you know like I consider myself pretty technologically savvy it's hard so I'm working on it my friend Ange McKay you guys know Ange she um, is helping me with it. Um, you know, I say I'm technologically savvy, but every week I have trouble finding the stinking comments on Facebook so I can see what you guys are saying. Hmm. That's so weird. Okay, let me close it. Permission required to draw. What? Okay. I don't know. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I want to be able to see what you guys are saying, but it's not coming up. That's weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll see what you say. Maybe I don't. Hopefully I can. So you guys, we've had the return of summer here. It's going to be like 99 on Sunday. I'm so mad because I'm doing Halloween projects and fall projects. I want some fall weather. We had a little taste. I don't know what happened. <sighs> Well, you know, when you live in South Texas, you have to be prepared. October, you still have hot days, some. And November, you can even have hot days. There's been Thanksgivings where we wear shorts. It's not even cool at Thanksgiving. But you can always wish, right? A girl can wish. <laughs> okay, here's what we're doing today. Three Have a Hoot projects. Let me move this down. Hey, you guys, last week I showed you my little tape dispenser that I got at Michael's. Look, it's a little clip and you clip it on your table. And then today when I was going um, through and picking a winner for um, the prizes, I saw somebody ask what it's called. I don't know what it's called. It's by Scotch. So I bet if you search Amazon, um, look at that, it even rotates. The one I saw on an ad, you can hook your um, wrapping paper to it but I don't think that's this one. I don't know, that doesn't look like a wrapping paper would hook to it, does it? But it clips to your table, I love it. That way it doesn't get lost and it's there when you need it. Anyway, side note. Okay, now my sign is, is crooked, I can see it. When you do Facebook Live, there's like a um, about an eight or 10 second delay and I have to wait to see if my sign is crooked. <laughs> okay, so have a hoot. You guys, how many of you have this? Um, Kathy, you had freeze warnings last week and today it's 85 in Minnesota. How weird. That's a huge, that's a huge swing. My husband has business in Minnesota. He's been going to Minnesota about once a month and he's like taunting me when he gets there. He's, you know, oh, it's 60 degrees. I know you guys get really, really cold though in the winter. I don't know if I could handle that. Okay. How many of you have this? I'm getting so distracted. Lori says she found the tape dispenser. It's called Clip and twist. Okay, good, Lori. Thank you. So if you want that cool tape dispenser, Lori says clip and twist. What will they think of next? So this little stamp set is so, so, so cute, especially if you love to color. Um, I think that these little owls are adorable anyway, but I love to color with our Stampin' Blends. So when I saw it, I was very excited. It's on page 62 of the catalog, of the holiday catalog. I want to point out that it's a bundle. I don't like how they have the bundle prices in this catalog because I, I myself have overlooked them. When you buy the stamp set, here's the number right here. 
it tells you it's $23. If you buy the dies, here's the die number right here. It tells you $34. But if you buy them as a bundle, here's the bundle price up here. You save 10%. You have to use that bundle number because if you enter this number and this number, it's not going to give you that discount. I have done that myself. When the, when the catalog first came out, I ordered this set right here. It didn't even dawn on me that it had dies. When the image is shaded, that means there's a die that matches it, but I don't know, I just, hello, wasn't thinking, and I missed that. So make sure when you're ordering that you look so that, where did, where did it go, what page was that? So that you use the die, the bundle number, and I use the bundle number on our supply sheet, okay? So cute little, cute little owls, some cute little pun sayings. Um, this die is actually the coolest die in the set, and I didn't even use it. I can see that I have used it, but not on any of our projects today. But the sample in the catalog shows where they've made a little frame in the card and have the little owls sitting in each one. It's very, very cute. But uh, for some reason, I didn't use it. But the other dies cut out the owls. Does this belong here? I feel like this isn't supposed to be here. I don't know. My dies get mixed up. I did that last week. I had a die that <laughs> I said went with ornate frames and it didn't. I apologize. Um, but anyway, all right, let's get started on, we're going to start with Halloween. I had a special request from Karen. I don't know if Karen's watching. Karen is in the eye, in the path of that horrible hurricane, so she probably isn't watching, but maybe she'll watch later. She said, please do more Halloween. And I said, absolutely, I love Halloween. So we're going to do some more Halloween. This is a little box. We have made this box before. It holds a regular size Reese's peanut butter cup. These are not your ordinary Reese's peanut butter cups. They are Franken cups. See right here, it has the green um, chocolate. I'm not gonna open this and show you because I will eat these. I have zero, zero, zero self-control when it comes to these. Peanut butter is my weakness. So a cute little treat box to hold a full size Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, okay, thanks, Kathy. Suddenly I saw that spider web on there and I thought this doesn't go here. <laughs> my dyes get mixed up. They do. I, I'm a mess, you guys. I'm a mess. I'm not, I'm pretty type A personality, but when it comes to being, uh, I'm organized. I'm just not neat. Does that make sense? Is that, can you be organized without being neat? That's me. I'm not nice and neat, but I do like nice and neat. I just am in a hurry. I think that's what it is. I'm always in a hurry. So I don't take time to be nice and neat and everything gets mixed up. Okay, for our box, let's make our box first. You're gonna need a six and a fourth by six and three fourths basic black. Basic black. Remember, all of this is right here on that PDF. This PDF is free every week, you guys. Sometimes you email me and ask me where you can buy it. Don't buy it, it's totally free. This is my gift to you every week, okay? Okay, six and a fourth by six and three fourths. We're gonna turn on the long side first and we're gonna do half an inch, two and seven eighths, five and an eighth, five and three fourths. Then you're gonna turn it and, um, whoops, I just hit the camera, <laughs> sorry. It's gonna be that kind of day, I, I have a feeling. We're gonna have lots of craziness today. Um, the short side we're gonna score at two and a fourth, two and seven eighths, five and an eighth, and five and three fourths. Now, I didn't even say where I got that candy. Okay. Did I mess that up or did I mess that up? I totally messed that up. Score the long side. What did I do? Did I do the short measurements on the long side? <laughs> Hold on, let me get another piece of paper. It's gonna be that kind of day. It's been that kind of week. Hold on, hold please. Let me give him a paper. Let's try that again. Maybe that could be a box for an individual peanut butter cup. Okay, for those of you that say I make it look easy, see, I screw up just as much as everybody else. Let's try that again. Did I put my, did I type that right? Yeah, okay, okay, let's try it again. Long side, half an inch, one and an eighth. I think I skipped down to the other line and six and an eighth, okay? That's the sh long side, <laughs> the long side. Now the short side is two and a fourth, two and seven eighths, five and an eighth, 
and five and three fourths. Now that looks right. See, I was thinking in my mind while I was saying those measurements that I didn't tell you where I got the, the Franken cups when I was distracted. The Franken cups came from Sam's. Do you guys have Sam's Club? It's like Costco, but it's not Costco, it's Sam's. <laughs> I like Sam's better than Costco because it's way less crowded. I went to Costco one time in recent years to see what I was missing, and all I was missing was the crowd. So I go to Sam's. I'm sure Costco probably has them too, in a big box. So you could get them and hand them out to your trick-or-treaters. We're having trick-or-treaters here. Our mayor said, absolutely, nobody has the power to cancel Halloween. I don't usually agree with our mayor, but I was very happy to hear him say that. <laughs> so we're having Halloween. Um, but you could also, if you're not having Halloween, these are fancy. And you would probably want to hand these out at work or your kid's school or whatever. You can make them two weeks ahead of time and put them in a bag and write on the bag that they've been quarantining for two weeks and they're safe. Okay, so let's look at our piece. This is the long side. We have one row on the bottom and two rows at the top. So let's start at the bottom. We're going to cut off that square right there. Then we're going to snip all the other score lines. Then take your scissors and just cut off the corners of those little, the little squares. All right. <laughs> Yvonne, you know, I score wrong a lot, a lot, more than I'd like to admit. All right, now we've got two rows here. This, this is gonna be the piece that tucks in and this is the top. So we're gonna keep those two. We're gonna cut off these two over here first on the edge. So two long ones on the end. And then let's cut off the two squares on the end. Then we're gonna cut off these two squares. Right here. Like that. All right, now let me show you on the box. I like to have the little flaps right here. The reason why I keep the flaps is so that when you close your box, there's no weird gap there. It looks like a real box, right? You don't, if you left those off and you closed your box, there would kind of be a funky gap. You would kind of, it kind of would just look, I don't know, not so nice and neat. So that's what these two are. And we want them, they could be connected to the top, but it's much better if they're connected to the sides. So you want to cut from this side over like that. That way, this is the lid that folds in, see that? And now they're connected to the sides. Let's cut the um, corners off of those as well, just to make them go in nicer. And there you have it. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. We gotta cut the corners off of these two. Cutting the corners just makes everything fit together a little bit better. Because if you cut on the outside of your score line or the inside of your score line, your paper is going to be just, you know, like a hair too big or hair too short. So if you cut those corners off, everything will match up and fit just fine. Okay, now I did do a clean recording of this. So if you want to come back and make this box, you can go over there and look at it. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be linked on my blog too. One thing I do when I watch a YouTube video is I like to see the piece like this and I like to pause the video and then I can just trim my paper. So if you watch the replay, now's the time to pause. All right. Okay. Now stamp and seal plus, I'm going to put it down that long side tab. And if you fold over, it will fit perfectly. And now we've got our box. And you know what? You couldn't put adhesive here and here, but this this isn't like we're packing books in here. It's not heavy. So <laughs> I'm just going to put adhesive on that last little flap. And then put that guy in and close your box. All right? Easy. We've made this. I think this is the third time I've made this box. It fits that Reese's peanut butter cup so perfectly. Why mess with it, right? Okay, now here is my favorite paper. I should give this paper a plug once more. I have literally bought 
10 packs of it, you guys. I'm not exaggerating. So look, I have a lot. I buy 10 packs because I do Megan takes, right? So each pack has four pieces of this paper. Um, you'll be able to get three of these out of one sheet. But this pick a plaid, no, pick a plaid. What is that? Pick a plaid. Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper. It has all these plaids that you can use for Halloween and fall, Christmas, or any, any time. I mean, that right there just looks like a cute little plaid, right? Not necessarily holiday. But then you do have like that. It's perfect for fall. And then we've got some Christmas. I like that they have the pinks in here. These two especially. We're going to use this one on the next project. Because I love pink. We don't have enough pink. I feel like we don't ever have enough pink in our designer series paper. But um, I like that because that can be used spring, summer, winter, fall, I think. So anyhow, that pack of paper is six by six and it is on sale. So that's where this came from. See, we've got a a um, Christmas pattern on the back. I'm gonna put that right there. And there's our box. All right, now let's do our little owl. He's a spooky little owl. And I'm gonna stamp him two times. I'm gonna stamp him just one time here on Whisper White Paper. And then over here I've got this strip of uh, Whisper White. It's, uh, I believe, one by four. And I am going to just stamp the bottom of him because we're going to cut him out with the die and pop him up so he's, you know, like he's above the paper. See how he's over the paper, okay? So that means when we're coloring, we only need to color the owl and the moon on this part and then we'll color the branch over here. Now, coloring your owl, so many options, right? I am just going to do soft suede. Um, that, to me, is the obvious color, and it's my favorite brown. So soft suede, and I'm going to start with my stamp and Blend. Um, I'm going to do the light. I'm going to give him, like, a base coat of light. I'm going to come up here, go carefully around his eyes. I'm using the bullet tip because I feel like I have better control there than the brush tip. Now I'm gonna take the dark, and you wanna add some dark anywhere that overlaps, so his little wing is behind his body, so there would be a shadow there. There would also be a shadow right here below the cape, and behind the cape right there. Okay, so then take your light again and blend it all together. You want to work kind of quickly because these are alcohol markers and they will dry quick. And if you wait too long, like if you stop to watch your Netflix in the middle of your coloring, they won't blend so well. Okay, now, you know what, while I have this out, I'm going to do the branch over here. I'm just going to do dark. There's no sense in trying to shade this one. Unless you're really, really good. Because it's very, very skinny. When it gets small like this, I just kind of tap the color, tap, 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 just to get just enough in. I'm still a little bit out of the lines, but it's almost impossible. <sighs> Kathy, it's my favorite paper too, for sure. All right, for the cape, I'm gonna use Smoky Slate. Now we do have basic black um, Stampin' Blends, but it is black. It is dark, 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 dark. And you will lose the details here on this cape um, because it is so dark. So I'm gonna just do Smoky Slate. It has its place. You, you know, there are times when you need that. But right here, I don't wanna lose any of the detail. So I'm gonna do Light Smoky Slate. I'm gonna go over those lines and then I'm gonna take it and go on the edge of the cape here, like that. And I'm gonna pull that color over now with my light. And I'm going to leave it pretty light over there where his eyes are looking. Okay. Whew. Y'all, I'm having neck issues. And this is hurting my neck. I should pull the chair over. Now, with my dark smoky slate, I'm just going to go with that one in the back. Because it's going to be dark anyway, because it's behind him. Like that. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to do his little feet. 
And I'm using Cajun Craze for his feet. Oh, uh-oh, missing lid, flew across the room. And for the moon, I'm gonna do Daffodil Delight. Okay, now, the dies. You can see where they measure. I mean, measure, you can see which things they cut out. <laughs> I don't know where that word came from. You can see where they measure. Um, and we're gonna just cut him out. That's why we did not color the branch. Um, Nina, you know what? At first I thought it was his wing too, but look, that's his wing. And that part's the back of the cape, right? Okay, now I've got my magnetic plate on here. And I'm gonna line that up. Our neighbors are building a pool. I don't know if I've told you guys that, but oh my gosh. I don't know if they're ever gonna finish. We live in a cul-de-sac, so, you know, the work trucks are all over the place for like months. They started in April, and here we are October. Those poor kids. I thought they were gonna swim this summer. My daughter thought she was going to swim this summer. That's where her best buddies live. Okay, now on this piece, let's take our memento black again. I've got ink on me already. Have a hoot on Halloween. And I'm going to stamp that pretty close to the branch like that. And then we'll get our pick a banner punch. Hi, Debbie. And I'm going to stick that in. And you know what? I'm going to... Because I didn't leave much wiggle room, I'm going to turn it over and make sure I'm not going to punch my words. If I could see the words right there, I would just kind of shorten it up a little bit. But I think I did okay. There we go. All right. So I mentioned at the beginning, my kids are back at school. It's crazy. They are, well, my younger two are in middle school. And they are so happy. So, so, so happy. My middle child did not want to go back. And she's the one that we've been a little bit worried about being kind of isolated. And she is back to her little happy, bubbly self. It's so good to see. They're very, very happy. Even though, this is weird, at school, they're still doing Zoom school at school. But they do go to their classrooms. They are in the classrooms with their teachers. They are seeing other kids. So they are happy. They are happy, which, you know, you know, our kids, if our kids aren't happy, mom's not happy. It goes vice versa too, right? If mom's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> but you know, as a mom, if your kids are unhappy, it's hard. My older one, she's not so happy. She doesn't love it. But, you know, I told her this morning, you make your own happiness you have to deal you have to deal with the cards that are dealt to you, right, you guys? I mean, yeah, we've all been dealt a hand in 2020. But you got to you got to make the most of it. Okay, this is the glitter ribbon. It's we've had this for a while, glittered organdy ribbon, and it's kind of um it's a stiff ribbon. It's pretty stiff. Um it ties nicely, but if we have any ribbon that screams Halloween, I think it's this one. And done. Those are pretty easy. I think if you're gonna make a bunch, if you go buy that box of Franken cups at Sam's or Costco, I think there's 18 in a box. You could make those pretty fast. Sit down with your blends in front of the TV, color those, score your boxes. I don't think that would take too long. It's simple, right? Now, Christmas is gonna come around and we're gonna have Christmas, um, probably, right? Christmas um, Reese's. Use the same box, just change the colors, use your paper from the plaid tidings and just change the owl and you can do the same exact project. That's why I love these stamp sets that have some stretch, you know, um, it's not just a Halloween stamp set or just a Christmas set. It is a lot of, a lot of holidays on this one. Okay, hold on, I gotta chase this lid down. All right. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me, those of you who are joining. 
All right, next we have a card. And I have to tell you guys, for my card makers out there, I know I've been doing a lot of 3D projects lately. I have a hard time not doing 3D projects. <laughs> I want to do all 3D projects all the time. But next week, we're going to do banner year next week, you guys. And I do have another card next week, too. A card in two, two 3Ds. I just love making 3Ds. Okay, but this card, here we go. Oh, no, no, I have the wrong tray. Hold on, hold on. We are doing this card, but I just pulled out the wrong tray. No? Is this right? No, this is right. I just have the wrong project on the tray. Okay. This, again, uses that Plaid Tidings designer series paper that's on sale. And it's the pink one that I love so much. I've taken this holiday themed stamp set and made it not holiday, right? Um, this is the little, um, the little owls with a mistletoe, but they don't have to have the mistletoe when you cut them out. In fact, the mistletoe cuts out too, but you can throw it away. So look at your stamps, right? And think, what else can I do here? It doesn't, you know, I, I, I don't have to put it away when the holidays are over. All right, let's start with our cuties. And I wanted to tell you also that this uh, card, I used a card sketch for it and I can't remember where I got the card sketch. It was on Instagram. It was a challenge blog. Does anybody know? Does anybody recognize it? It was a few weeks ago. Um, uh, sketches, I've showed you guys sketches before. I love, 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 love using card sketches. They're like a little blueprint for your cards and it's a great starting place because a lot of times when I start to do a project, okay, I need to make a card and then you pull out all your stuff, right? And you're like, uh, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't just all the time, doesn't just pop in my head. Sometimes I have an idea, but a lot of times I'll go and look at um, uh, sketches and you know you can also look at other cards and get ideas from other cards but a sketch is just like a blueprint I'll try to find it this weekend and post it for you guys so you can see the sketch I, you know it's funny the sketch at first when I saw it I wasn't really like a fan of the sketch but then when I saw the samples that people had made with it I changed my mind and I liked it all right, so Soft Suede, our first owl, is Soft Suede. I'm going to do his little eyelids in dark, okay? Look what I did. <laughs> Those colors are so close. I think this is dark, and this is light. There we go. Joy, that's right. It does make a cute anniversary card, doesn't it? That's a great idea. These are little lovebirds. That's what I was calling them earlier today, the little lovebirds. All right, so I think that's the boy, and this is the girl. So the girl, she's going to be in crumb cake. She's going to be a lighter brown. Oh, my crumb cake is running out. Suddenly, my blends are starting to run out. I think they've all hit that magic number whatever that number of, of colors is all right we're going to add some dark below the wing i'm adding wherever you see those little marks i'm also going to put some dark down here uh, around her bottom area not her bottom but the bottom of her body <laughs> that sounded ridiculous okay you know what i want to do her oh i need to pull up a chair i'm going to do her eyelids dark as well she's cute you know did I put no I didn't we could put little we could get a little bit of pink and put little cheeks little rosy cheeks on her that would be cute okay you don't want to forget their little feet um Karen says my hub hubby is a birder I purchased this set to use for the coming year sorry oh Karen that's so thoughtful what a what a neat idea don't you love when you see a stamp set that's like made for you? You know, like, oh, your husband's a birder, perfect. Or like, you know, like the golf set or something that's made for you. The, uh, there was a set many, many years ago. In fact, let's see, I have it up here. One of my favorite stamp sets of all time. Well, I thought I could pull it out quickly, but I don't see it. One of my favorite stamp sets of all time was way back 
when Stampin' Up! started doing photopolymer stamps, they weren't in the catalog. Do you guys remember that? They were like individual. They, we'd print off a flyer. And there was a um, Western set. Do you guys remember that set? That's my favorite stamp set of all time because at the time, my girls were little. It's very childlike, that set. And we, I was still working and our school mascot was the Buckaroos. That's where I got my name, by the way. It was the mascot of the school I was teaching at. And so it was perfect. Oh, did I not cut that very well? Okay, come on. I have found with this magnetic sheet, the paper really kind of sticks down. Oh, I guess that's okay. I was a little bit off with that die. It'll do. It'll do. But anyway, do you guys remember that set? I may be able to find it if you guys want to wake it when we're done. Um, Y'all remember them, don't? Yeah, it was like, I guess Stampin' Up! was trying out to see if their customers would be interested in photopolymer, right? And uh, they would offer them like as a special, special offer, Jan, yeah, special offer. There was my second favorite stamp set. I need to tell you what I'm doing. Bumblebee card base, okay? If you don't know what a card base is, guys, it's half a sheet of cardstock. You can either cut it long ways or you can cut it this way and then you fold it in half. That's your standard card base. And this is a piece of Whisper White four by five and a fourth. Um, I have two strips of that beautiful designer series paper. They're both an inch thick. One is four inches long and one is four and a half inches long. My second favorite stamp set of all time is the dress form. Do you guys remember the dress form? It had a measuring tape stamp. It had a cute little dress form. It had, it was like sewing themed. I still have that one too. I'll pull those out at the end. Cause I have my stamp cabinet right here. You, you guys have asked me before if I ever keep any stamps and I have about maybe six stamp sets that I've kept. I usually get rid of them because this is my business and I, you know, can only use what's current. Um, but I do keep a few and those were two that I've kept. Um, oh, Susan, I've never shared that before. Okay, I'll show it to you guys in a minute. I'll pull it out at the end. Um, when I was teaching, this is one of those awesome gold hoops again, guys. Remember, we used these a couple weeks ago. Um, of course, our little lovebirds need to sit on a gold hoop like they're in a little bird cage, right? Um, I'm gonna try, that glue dot's not sticky. I'm gonna pull off a, <laughs> okay. None of the glue dots seem to be sticky today. I'm gonna um, pull off a couple of these and then stick it down like this, but we're gonna cover that up. Let me make sure, I'm gonna put that one a little bit higher just to get it in place. Um, yeah, that's where my name came from. I was teaching school, I taught elementary school for 17 years. And I had three little girls, three little girls. <laughs> they were little, I was tired. And I was teaching kindergarten. I taught kindergarten for a long time and then I taught first grade. And we were the buckaroos. So I'm gonna punch this first. I think that's a better idea. This is a strip of crumb cake. And I feel like if I don't punch it first, I may get off centered with my um, sentiment. So I'm gonna put it in here and I think I am gonna see how you can adjust that. I always cut my paper a little bit too short. So I like to pull it and not hit that because you can go all the way down and hit that and know when to stop, but it cuts a lot of that paper off. So we were the buckaroos. That was our mascot. And um, we had, we were having a craft sale at our school. Teachers were all like bringing whatever they made, you know, people were sewers and knitters or whatever. And I needed to come up with a name and I came up with Pink Buckaroo. That was the name I came up with. And then it's stuck. It has stuck. Okay, so um, Pink, because I had three little girls. I don't know if I said that. This right here is really a, a dye that I am loving. And I couldn't remember the name when I made the video. Let me look, Autumn Essential Dyes. The stamp set, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, it's not my favorite. It has this giant, um, foliage and I actually have used it. I will show you guys. It was our, my birthday cards for my team. Um, and I do like that card, but I love the dies especially. And I like these little, 
like a wheat stalk or whatever. And then it's got these great borders. So um, the stamp set, I'm going to challenge myself to use it more, but I do really, really like these dies. So that's where this is from. I'm going to put that over there and I'm going to just stick the dimensional on top of it. And then we need to stamp the sentiment from Owl of Us. From Owl of Us. I'm going to put that right there. Oh, Karen, you have the dress form set. So as you guys know, I'm working towards my million dollars in sales, and I've been putting a lot of thought into my million dollar stamp set. And I have been trying to think of my favorite stamp sets. You know, what style, did I not, I didn't peel that paper off. What style I would want my stamp set in. And that dress form set, the way it's drawn, it's nice and neat, but it's hand drawn, right? It's got very clean lines. That's my favorite. I don't know how you would describe that style. Black line, open image. Not, it's cutesy, but not too, too cutesy. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. All right, linen thread. It's gone. Where did it go? It was here. We got to add a bow, of course. Okay, where is it? Hmm. How did it disappear? Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to take my linen thread. I'm going to double it. Um, and I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm using it like it's one piece, okay? And tie my bow like that. Debbie, thank you. I, you know, <laughs> in all honesty, you guys, when you do a Facebook Live, you have to you have to chat about things to fill the time sometimes, right? And I used to think, oh, nobody wants to hear my stuff. But I know that when I listen to people's Facebook Live, I like to learn about them and their families and stuff. So thanks for saying that. I have had a couple of ugly comments in regards to things that I share. So I try not to overshare. <laughs> Nobody likes oversharing. Um, but thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, there's our card. Now, again, I want to point out the, um, what's the word? The flexibility of this stamp set. Change the paper, change the stamp. You could have a Christmas, you know, you could use, add the Put the um, mistletoe up here, which cut out when I cut that out. I don't know where it went. And you could put that there, and it could be a Christmas card, right? You could change that to the Christmas paper. Change it to the orange paper and use that guy. It's so cute. I wish I had used him. Oh, you know what? I did use him, and you'll see that on Monday. Um, so make it whatever you want, you know? Non-holiday, holiday. You can get a lot of reach, a lot of reach out of the stamp set. Okay, one more. One more. And this one actually is funny. This was not my third project until yesterday. I had an idea. And the third project I'll show you on Monday. I like this one better. And it's a candy holder. And I have no Christmas candy. So I just pulled out these. I don't know if I like those in there. But let me pull them out and just show you. You could put Hershey Kisses, right? Or those little chocolate bells that come out peanut, the peanut butter cups, just, you know, it's just enough. It's more than one or two, but it's not going to break the bank either. So see what I did here? I used the celebration label to make the little box. And look, those little owls fit perfectly on the smaller one. So that's, that's the box. That's what we're making. I just don't have any Christmas candy <laughs> to put in there. I could, I, whatever I had, I do have a, I do have a cabinet of old candy. Nothing was Christmas related and would go in there. I had some jelly bellies, but that didn't look right either. So anyways, I hate to not have the right candy, but nobody has Christmas candy yet. Has anybody seen Christmas candy? I know it's super weird to be looking for Christmas candy on October 8th, but when you're me, you need the candy ahead of time. Um, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. You know, it, you, you really do try to blow off the ugly comments, but they stick, you know, you, you know, they stick for a little while. Even when I was teaching, I've told, I've said this many times when I was teaching, I could get 20 emails of parents that were happy and loved me. And I could get one that was unhappy and angry at me for whatever. And I will, would lay at night thinking of that one email. I don't know why we do that to ourselves, but whatever, whatever. Okay. So let me show you how to make this. You're going to need real red cardstock. Um, let's see the size. I need to get my PDF over here. Do, 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 do. The size is two and a half by six and three fourths. 
The short side, we're gonna do half an inch by two and a fourth. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, I gotta fix that paper. Not two and a fourth, two. Half and two, okay? By the way, when I pulled this out, did you guys see? Here's where I <laughs> designed that box yesterday. Here are all my measurements. And uh, I just translated that over on the paper today and it's wrong, so I need to fix that. Two, it needs to be half an inch on either side. And then two inches from that side and two inches from this side, which would be four and a half. The middle is two and three fourths, okay? Okay, now I'm not gonna worry about that extra little score line there because it's gonna be glued to the sides, so you won't see it. Okay, so burnish your lines. Who knows where my bone folder is? It's right here, oh my goodness. It's actually where I need it for once. Okay, now take this piece and just cut a V around those score lines on the long side. We're doing like surgery. <laughs> We're removing the score lines. I'm also gonna just cut these ends at a, an angle. Do some surgery, remove your score line like this. Did you guys see my scarecrow pictures last weekend? I need to I need to share some more pictures with you because our neighborhood's having a scarecrow contest. And uh, if it's a contest, I have to be involved. <laughs> it's kind of a sickness. But I apparently didn't get the memo that this is an amazing scarecrow contest. And mine looks pretty lame out there. But there's more out there. I'll show. I'll share the pictures with you guys next time I, I'm down there, so I can. We we put them all in our entrance to our neighborhood. We have a like a green, uh, you know, like grass median in the middle, so everybody's setting up their scarecrows there. People are amazing, amazing. Okay, now let me tell you what I did here. I've already cut these out, and I'm using the second smallest here. Okay, and we're going to use the smallest for the stamped image like that. Okay, all right, now take your Stampin' Seal Plus and put it on all six of your tabs. Come on, come on, <laughs> God, come on. There we go. Now I'm gonna fold it up and make a U. And remember, this is not gonna be seen at all. So don't, don't worry. All right, so I'm gonna just make these straight like that. And you know what, this is wrong, look. Do you guys see my measurements are off still? It's too long on that side, what did I do? It needs to be two inches on both sides. It's six and three fourths, so oh, wait, this needs to be four and three fourths, not four and a half, okay? No problem, I will update that PDF when I'm done, but for right now, we're just gonna chop it. Chop, chop. That's weird because you know I made this video this morning or yesterday and it worked. I don't know. Okay, so two inches from either side. Don't worry, I'll fix the PDF. And I made this little box so that it would fit right into these notches right here and go up to those notches. Now that I've trimmed mine a little, it is a little bit short. It'll just hold less candy. I'm gonna set it right in there. You wanna make sure, whoops, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna poke out above that little notch, okay? So that's really all you need to just make sure it's not poking up or poking down. Okay, now I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna just kind of lay that, eyeball it so that they're even. And then, well, that didn't work. I wanna make sure that they're even on the bottom so that it doesn't rock. There we go. And that's it. That's your basic box construction. Okay, really easy. Again, change the colors. Make it a Halloween project. Make it a Easter project. Make it whatever. And just use different colors and different stamps. All right, so let's stamp our cute little owls. I have paper somewhere right here. We're gonna stamp this little tiny row. The cafeteria had been challenged to do a scarecrow of the school mascot. <gasps> Lisa, have you guys made it yet? You know, I've never made a scarecrow before. These people in my neighborhood, oh. <laughs> it's a good thing paper has two sides because when you stamp in the wrong color, you just flip your paper over. How many mistakes have I made today? What is this, like six? These people in my neighborhood are like scarecrow professionals. These are full-sized 
like human <laughs> scarecrows. I made a cute little, little, you know, I bought the scarecrow at Michael's and then I dressed her up super fancy. All you can see really is her face, but she's that size. But she's not, <laughs> she's not humongous like these other ones. We have a dentist scarecrow out there that's sitting in an antique dental chair with a, the dentist scarecrow is next to it with like a, like a gas machine, an anti, I don't know where these people are, get their stuff. And I spent a lot of money on my lame scarecrow. <laughs> Lesson learned. There's another one, my neighbor down the street, she did my favorite one. She's so creative and she's not, like she doesn't have a, a creative job. She, but she is the most creative person. Everything she does is gorgeous. And she, I can tell she used her husband's clothes and she stuffed him. And I think I posted a picture of that one. It has a snake around its neck and it's holding a cage with a skeleton in it. And it's beautiful. I don't know. I need to take some lessons next year, before next year. Okay, now for these little guys, we're going to start, I think we're going to keep it simple because they are so small. You'll see when you start to color this, it's very tiny. So I'm not even going to attempt to do any kind of shading or fancy anything. I mean, I'd have to get out like a, a magnifying glass to do that. But I'm just going to color them all in dark um, crumb cake. And when you get around, when you go around their eyes, just tap, tap, tap your color. That way you'll just get it just a little bit on there. Okay. There's one scarecrow that I think has to be disqualified because it's not a scarecrow. They set it up um, and the scare, like it has like the stick and everything there. And then it has a sign and it says working from home due to COVID. So the scarecrow isn't even there. I mean, it's really clever. It is really clever, but disqualified, I think. All right, again, tap, 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 tiny, 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 tap, tap, tap with this little red hat. And then we'll do, let's do light soft suede. Thank you, Jill, I appreciate that. All right, yeah, the red is their hat. You may not even be able to see it from where you are. It's their hat. Um, but yeah, red, we're doing red piece of Christmas. Are you guys, are you guys getting into Halloween this year? Are you, you know, I had my husband bring over all my little Halloween decorations from our storage unit and I just can't even bring myself to, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Everything feels so the. All right. Now I wanted this to look snowy, right? Cause there's little snowflakes. So I'm going to take my pool party, stamp and blend. I'm going to go around. Some of our neighbors, I actually was out last night. I ran in the evening over to my mom's and I noticed that our neighborhood has a ton of Halloween decorations out. I walk the neighborhood every single morning and they're not, you know, it's those big blow up things. They're not out in the morning. I had no idea. There's a, a street, a house down the street from me that has six giant blow up Halloween things. There are a few up in the morning and Pepper freaks out, starts barking at them. It's so funny. All right, so I use the brush tip on the big sections, right? And then I went in with my bullet tip. Did you can? I need to do it. I, I made him go get those boxes. I did, I did decorate my front porch. We bought some pumpkins. I and it's my favorite. I love, and I do more pumpkins than, you know, like I don't really do anything scary. I like, Lots and lots of pumpkins. But this year, I don't know. I just, meh. I'm not into it. But we are doing Halloween trick-or-treating. I'm excited about that. Just because it's something normal, you know? Something normal. 
Okay, so we've got that done. Let me hold it so you guys can see. Aren't they cute? I have cut a piece of Tis the Season designer series paper. Again, this paper is on sale. Let me show you this paper. Um, this paper is a great basic Christmas paper. I actually used it. I designed my Christmas treats class this week and I used that, this paper for that. Basic patterns, small little patterns, so that it's really good for Christmas um, projects and cards. It's not anything big. Um, I love patterns like this where it's a monochromatic, it's a stripe or a polka dot or something like that. So I really, you can tell which ones I used. Um, and this one that we're using right here is my favorite, the little plaid. So this pack is on sale as well, $9.74. You get 48 sheets, six by six. All right, we're gonna punch the ends of this piece. There we go. And we're gonna put this right here on the front, like that. And then I've got this gorgeous ribbon. This ribbon is called, what's it called? Snowflake Splendor. You know the suite in the catalog that is blue, all the blues, that's where it's from. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of Stampin' Seal Plus there. I'm gonna lay that guy down right there. Trim the edges. It's a real stiff ribbon too, like the glitter ribbon. Let's see, I feel like that needs to be a little bit smaller. And we'll grab our dimensionals. And we'll put our little cute little snow scene right there overlapping. And we'll tie a bow. And now you're supposed to leave the candy outside for the trick-or-treaters. You know, that, that makes sense just to set the candy out. However, I've told you all this story before. I know I have. Some kids, we used, to, we used to do that all the time. We'd leave a giant thing of candy. We have a lot of kids in our neighborhood. we leave a giant thing of candy and then we'd take our kids trick-or-treating. And one year, I hadn't even left our cul-de-sac yet. My kids were going to the neighbors and we had gone across the street. There's a neighbor that does like a little fun party that night with dinner and stuff. And we had gone over there for just a little while, like 10 minutes. And I came back to the house to grab something and all the candy was gone. I mean, it wasn't even dark yet. Some little punk <laughs> dumped it all in his bag. And I, it was like huge. I was so mad. So I worry about setting, I worry about setting the candy out, you know, because it takes one bad apple, right? And then I look like a jerk because I didn't have any candy for any of the trick-or-treaters. Can you tell I'm <laughs> still bitter <laughs> about it? I know, so I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna stamp Merry Christmas in red, real red on Whisper White. I can tell that my my real red is my most used ink pad because it's the loosest. The more you use these ink pads, the looser they get, the easier they get to open. And it's definitely, whew, it opens real easy. All right, now this, we're just gonna cut this down really small. And we're gonna cut the words apart. And we're gonna glue one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay. And then we're gonna add a few little snowflakes. And then I will show you guys my favorite stamp sets. I'll pull them out. So just as a reminder, as I'm finishing up, if you guys want these make and takes mailed to you next week, your order needs to be in by Monday at midnight, you can order anything you want. If you already have this bundle, but you want the make and takes, you can order cardstock and envelopes. I don't care what you order, but you can, the only way you can get them is free with an online order. It's my thank you for ordering. It's kind of like, this is my card class, because that's how my card class was. The projects were free with an order. And so this is my card class, except we make more 3Ds than cards. All right, you gotta add some snowflakes, adhesive backed snowflakes. This is what I've been sending my team for their birthdays. I send my team, my downline, um, a birthday card with an embellishment uh, every month, and this is what they're getting, these snowflakes. I love them. 
Okay, what do you guys think? How cute, right? I gotta find the right candy. Those Twix are too big. These are those 100 calorie Twix. They're too big. I mean, they work, but I don't think they're quite the right thing. What do you guys think? So cute. Again, you guys, please remember that this is versatile. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Change the colors, change the holidays, you know, switch it up. All right, so we made three things today. Halloween, all occasion over here. Like Joy said, this could be a great anniversary card. And Christmas. If you want these three make and takes, make sure your order is in by Monday at midnight and you use that host code. If your order is over $150, what do I always say? Don't use the host code because then you get Stampin' Rewards. What are Stampin' Rewards? Right here. It's like you hosted a workshop, but you didn't. You spent $150, so you get 10% in free stuff and on up. If I see your order and you didn't use the host code and it's over $150, don't fret, don't, uh, fret. I will know that you want them and I will send them to you anyway, okay? And if you forget that host code, like I mentioned earlier, because they've made it kind of difficult now, just message me. If you don't use the host code, I assume you don't want the make and takes, um, okay? But if you forgot the host code and you do want the make and takes, just email me and let me know. Okay, now I promised I would show you guys these two stamp sets. Let me see if I can find them. Hold on. If you don't want to see them, you are welcome to go about your business. But I'm going to look for them and see if I can find them. Hmm, they used to be right here. They may be up high. Yes, they're way up high. Okay, hold on. Let's see. I may have to get the stool. Short girl problems. I can't remember what other stamp sets I've kept. We'll see what I have up here in the stack. Sorry, Pepper. Let's see. Okay, here they are. Oh, there's actually several that I've kept. Okay, I'll show you. I'll show you my favorite stamp sets. All right, let me move this out of the way. So if you weren't here earlier, I was talking about my favorite stamp sets. And I've only kept however many over the years. My very favorite stamp set is this one. Yeehaw. Look at it. It's so old. So cute. I don't know. What year did this come out in? What does it say? Does it say? I guess maybe it says on the inside. <laughs> it's so old. I haven't used it in a long time. Does it have a year? I don't see it. Am I just looking at it? I don't know, but that's cute. Do any of you have the stamp set? You can tell it's hand-drawn, so cute. This is my second favorite stamp set, the dress form, measuring tape, sewing machine. So you can see I have kind of a, a style, right? Open line, coloring, cute. I also kept diagonal stripe. <laughs> I love that background stamp. Here's another one that I kept. And you know what? This isn't necessarily my style. But it's Western, a cowboy hat, cowboy boot. I love it. Horseshoe. And that's, those were cling mount, not clear mount. Do they have a year? I would love to know what year these came out in, but I don't see them on here. All right, what else did I keep? Oh, Jar of Love. Yeah, but you know why I kept this? Because I love to give um, jars during teacher appreciation. I would give the teacher a jar, a gift in a jar every week. I mean, every day of the week of that teacher appreciation week. And so I would use those for the tags. I kept this one. This one's relatively new. This was just a couple of years ago. Flowering Desert. I love that cactus and the fonts. I kept this one, <laughs> Freaky Friends, um, because um, I used to do the test tubes, remember? And you separate the Skittles and one would be... Um, you know, like vampire blood, and you'd put the bat, one would be, oh, I can't even remember what they were called, but one was, oh, I, I can't remember, but anyway, you would use a little, that you'd separate them by color, they'd all have a, a spooky name, and I use these as the, um, the little stamp, and then, of course, cookie cutter Halloween, so cute, one of my fairy favorites, I love it, see, it's kind of drawn in that same manner, isn't it? That cute, cute little manner, that cutesy style. 
So there you go, a trip down memory lane. How many is that? How many have I kept? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the last 11 years, that's how, those are the stamp sets I've kept. The retired stamp sets. Okay, you guys, a little peek into me and my, <laughs> my little history. You guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Let me know if you have questions. I'll be back next week with um, Banner Year, okay? And, oh, on Monday, come back for a bonus Have a Hoop Project, all right? You guys have a great weekend, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.